gonna be the dog's bollocks. That's that's <laughs> that's inappropriate and rude. <laughs> family time. The family yeah. hour. Hey! Hey, we're on the internet. Hi. Internet. All my all my notifications are going off. Oh gosh, Shoji's. Hi internet. Hey. Hi. G Govs. Hey. We're gonna play Iron Man Consulting Detective. <laughs> <laughs> uh close. We're gonna play Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective in the case of the Tin Soldier. Can we still fly that? Probably. Options. Interrogate witness. Look for clues. Shoot rockets out of hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would play that. Yeah, no, me too. <laughs> I guess, I guess, let's, oh man, I'm so rusty. Let's introduce ourselves. Hey, I'm Dre. You can find me on Twitter at Swandre3000, here at twitch.tv slash streamfriends and at friendsofthetable.net. I'm joined by three, three cool people. I'm joined by Nick. Hey, hey. My name is Nick Scratch. You can find me at Nick Scratch. Dot C H. But up, uh, that spells Nick Scratch. I forgot how it goes. I forgot my own jingle. <laughs> you gotta, we'll get it back. You got the how yeah, I got Nick it. got we'll his back groove back. Groove. <laughs> um, I'm also joined by Turkey. Hi. You can find me at Akatuki on Twitter. And Sarah. Hey, uh, I'm at Umbrella on Twitter, and I'm well chuffed to be here. Great. Um, let's see what Sherlock Holmes has to say for himself. I believe this game oh! is going to be really good. I think you're going to have to turn it up. Trying to survive. There he goes. Mostly off of each other. You see it in the paper every day. Thankfully, we have the London Times to keep us informed of all these troubling activities with an unbiased eye and razor sharp accuracy. We find this publication to be of invaluable assistance in our investigations, and I'm sure you will as well. Among the forces of evil which run rampant in this city, there are also, thankfully, two groups of individuals who will aid us in our cause. <clears throat> as we do, they attempt to right wrongs and restore harmony and civility to the streets of London. Is this guy Dr. The first of these groups is a ragtag <laughs> association of young ruffians. I call them... The Baker Street Irregulars. Don't let them fool you. They may be scruffy and deal bread, but they are on the right side of the law. What the fuck? They can go <laughs> everywhere, see everything, and overhear everyone. They are my eyes and ears in the streets the of London. Shaming. Unquestionably a tremendous <laughs> asset in our work. Oh, I think they will help us in our investigations us. if they can. Probably. The other group is a far more civilized collection of gentlemen than institutions. I call them the Baker Street regulars. They too will be extremely <laughs> useful in our good job, work. Good Yeah, that's a good joke. Yeah. Yeah. The investigation. Do the keep in that mind that it is a capital the, mistake the to theorize to before one has data. <laughs> Unwittingly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. Mm. The people and places to whom I will now introduce you will help us to collect the facts. May we use them wisely. Come. The game's a foot. Damn. I, Footy I love game. This. Footy oh. game. so good. Um, I guess, do I click e exit? Does it take me back to the menu? Yes. All right. Oh. I'm, okay. I'm sure the interface was better on Sega CD. Let's, let's learn about the regulars. <laughs> Mr. Henry Ellis is the foreign news editor for the London Times. He is a great reservoir of information of what's happening on the continent. He also has an interest in crime news. Ellis is always happy to help when he can, but you must be careful of what you tell him, or you might find what you've confided to him in the next day's times. Ooh. I'm digging that meme mug, though. Is that, is that Jim Carrey in the top right? I didn't know he was in this game. Edward Hall <laughs> is a young barrister whom you will find on most days at the Old Bailey. He's a cut above the other unimaginative members of his profession. Holmes, don't you think you should explain to them the difference between a well, barrister this person? and a solicitor? Yes, of course, Watson. A solicitor what? handles the routine legal business of our society. It's, if you do not have to go before a court, you will have no need for a barrister. 
If you must go before a court, then your solicitor would engage the services of a barrister. Uh, okay. You think, I think that other that person? Up. I think he referred to that other person as waffles. That's what I heard, right? Yeah. I heard Walt. I heard Doc Waltham. Doctor Chicken Waltham. or waffles? <laughs> That's a good joke for us Boston folks. Yeah. Uh, is Allison Meek just the same person, like the same actor? <clears throat> I was gonna say that, but I think Meek no, probably that's... has shittier beef. Meek is Paul Giamatti, yes. Exactly. <laughs> God damn it, Turkey. Oh yeah. Sir Jasper, <laughs> the chief medical examiner for St. Bartholomew's Hospital. He is London's greatest forensic pathologist. You can depend on him for all the technical details that can be obtained from any corpse whose cause of death is in question. Okay. Do we want to go through each one of these people? Sure. Okay. Isn't Lestrade a bad guy? I think he's a vampire. Yeah, wait. Ah, oh, Scotland Yard. Oh, no, never mind. If the Yard knew how to he's examine evidence okay. with any skill, there would be no need for our services. Inspector Lestrade is the pick of a bad lot. But it is true they may be a source of valuable information. After all, the professional police have methods for gathering facts that are not open to us. He's white, British, and rich, so he's still probably a bad guy. No, Lestrade is, uh, at least, like, on, like, BBC Sherlock, is basically, like, Sherlock's cop friend who's like, Aw, oh, Sherlock! You can't, you can't cross that line! But then, Gosh like, darn it, Sherlock. let Sherlock cross that line because it lets him solve the case. <laughs> That's our Sherlock. Mm -hmm. Shrug. Uh, Wait, in the BBC version of Sherlock, Lestrade's also a hot dad. Good. Oh, yeah. There he is. I just Porky Google. is not a pillar of society, Porky Shinwell. Say, but he is a man who has learned from his mistakes and is trying to start a new life. Although he is no longer in prison, he is still behind bars. Or shall I say, a bar. <laughs> Charlie <laughs> the bar in question is the Bye. Raven and Rat Inn. Bye. Porky is the proprietor. He has been of great help to us in the past, and I expect he will continue to be in the future. Let me, I like let Doctor me, Who. He's funny. Doctor I'm, Who is, is the perfect dad. This is a. Uh, I'm really interested to see how this uh, Dukes of Hazard Sherlock Holmes crossover is going to work since we got <laughs> Boss Hog here. Quentin Hogg is a crime reporter for the Police Gazette. He is an ex-police inspector who found the environment of Scotland Yard less than stimulating. He has a strong deductive mind and is a very good resource. This is a records office housing documents pertaining to births, marriages, deaths, and last wills and testaments. Okay, that was quick. I need to interject for a minute because it just occurred to me Shinwell was described as tedious. How tedious must you be among this group of people <laughs> to be described as tedious top line? <laughs> Shinwell's one to avoid. Do you think he's got like a really big list? It's a list of all the ways I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> Head clerk Israeli O'Brien is your contact in the Office of Records. The Office of Records contains legal records, both criminal and civil, as well as state papers. I think you'll find O'Brien to be a walking, or should I say, sitting encyclopedia of the office's affairs. <laughs> Now here is a person who usually gets in the last word. Langdale Pike is a human reference work on social scandal, especially on the London scene. He contributes bits of gossip to the garbage papers that cater to an inquisitive public. Garbage papers! Is he just the cheekier version of TMZ? Yes. He's right. <laughs> the cheekiest TMZ. If I can't Shit. find something in my own files, I go and examine the overflowing shelves of the Great London Library. It is a wealth of information. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, Jill in the chat says, this is the weirdest Oceans movie set up yet. We do, Murray? This gentleman oh, is the head chemist at Scotland Yard Criminology Laboratory. It is rumored that Murray lives in the lab. He is eternally <laughs> bent over one of his tables trying to extract the history of a crime from the physical evidence he's been given. All right. Whoa. 
I think you'll find these tools to be positively invaluable as you endeavor to help Holmes solve <laughs> these cases. Oh boy. This mixing is rough on this title yeah. music. Yeah. yeah. And also, um, what, is, what is the relationship between this and Home on the Range? That's a, a weird one. <laughs> the London Times. All right. Simply choose one of the papers and look for relevant names and locations in the articles. Uh, the directory. It's got, it's got all our names. Okay, yep. Mm hmm. Gotcha. Abdabs in chat says top 10 ankles that give us the vapors. <laughs> <laughs> Video scenes! This is some, the good shit. Some scenes are pertinent to the case, while others may be dead ends or red herrings. Touch the video for playback controls. Oh, where's the settings menu you speak of? Whoa! You fucked up now. This guy. <laughs> I wanted to just hang out with the judge all day. <laughs> and yes, have dabs. This is FMV. That guy fucking parties. Uh, okay, clue points. Okay. Alright, so that's all that. Um, there is no Wait. settings menu. I don't... <laughs> Otherwise, there I turn... Settings menu in your mind. Maybe once you is start... Is there like a, a, a escape or a function key that opens it up, maybe? Nope. If I hit escape, it just says, do you want to quit? Maybe once I start playing... Uh, yeah, maybe. This is a good pipe <clears throat> right here. All right, let's consult the shit out of this. Wait, I just realized, does that pipe uh, imply that there's a ghost Sherlock? There we go. The pipe is neat, but I wouldn't keep my expectations Turn on high. subtitles. There's, yep. there's no right. good dank in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Shall we? Consult? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Hudson. All right. May we be of some assistance, Inspector Smythe? General Farmsworth Armstead, one of the six surviving Waterloo Tontine ticket holders, has been murdered. Waterloo Tontine? The Waterloo Tontine was a lottery of sorts, Watson. It was set up in 1815 to aid the veterans of the Battle of Waterloo. Wellington's victory over Napoleon. Yes, of course, I knew that. <laughs> on the part of the founders. One pound bought a ticket in the name of some young relative. The ticket proceeds amounted to over a million pounds. Half went immediately to veterans and their families for medical and hardship expenses. What it's became really of heavy. the other half? It all went into an account at the Bank of England, where it's been collecting interest all these years. Very clever. And how does one win this? Yes. Simply by outliving all the other ticket holders. And now you say one of them has been murdered. Very suspicious. But who are the remaining five? The oldest is Captain Robert Jurgens, age 82. Then there are Nita and Claire Thomas, who are 80-year-old twins. William Rowland is 79, and Peter Dudley is 77. Well, General Armstead was the youngest at 74. Dun dun. You would have had the best chance to outlive the others. I recall reading something in the Times about a big to do involving the Tom Teen survivors on the 18th. That's correct. The Waterloo Anniversary Banquet at the Langham Hotel. Why is the name Armstead familiar? He was a noted art collector, I believe. He also authored a well known book, Treasures oh. of the Conquerors. Quite right. At the time of his death, General Armstead was... We, we couldn't we, afford to film the rest of it. Yeah, this. we lost this video, so... Uh... <laughs> it was to Rob Reiner cost too much. ...which at one point belonged to Joseph Bonaparte, Napoleon's brother. The general had new We lost this part to Sega CD video compression. Tell me about the circumstances of General Armstead's death. Should just cut in some sewer shark. <laughs> oh, oh shit! Minor three. 
admitted a call to the general study. Senate says he did not know the man. He was elderly and spoke with a French accent. Senate told him the general never saw anyone in the morning while he was at work. Gelman insisted that if Armstead read the letter he had with him, he would make an exception. And so it was. The Senate took the letter in, Armstead read it, and went quite pale. He told Senate to let the gentleman in. Sensing something amiss, the Senate dawdled in the area of the study for the next 15 minutes or so. I'm, he I'm sure these drawing, drawn men appreciate the you trying to keep their nose clean. <laughs> yeah. That's the door locked. He heard the crash of breaking glass. <clears throat> he raced to the kitchen and out the back door to enter the study from the garden. I don't see how, how we're not the erudite folks Holmes spoke of earlier. ...heavily against a shattered display case of military miniatures. Before Senate could assist him, he dropped a saber from his hand and fell over dead. I take it the letter which so upset the general was nowhere to be found. Correct, Mr. Holmes. He got real upset well, when Games Workshop said they were rebalancing. The <laughs> our brains and our feet to the task. Oh, okay. All right, let's get let's get Reedy up in this. Okay, so wait, let's let's actually like summarize all of that stuff first, really quick. Mostly for me because I only have paid attention. <laughs> Same. There's a lottery. Mm -hmm. Yes, and people in the lottery are dying. Yeah, like the well, lottery that you die. No, wait, that's a different thing. Oh. It's like uh, that one Jet Li movie. <clears throat> oh wait, is it like that one episode of Archer? We are not helping the, ourselves the... right now. <laughs> I, one episode so of Archer where no. he has to kill all the other Jet Lees to gain. I'm their forgetting power. everything <laughs> I thought I knew about this game or Sherlock Holmes. Cool. Okay, all right. So what? What actually happened? <laughs> so there were there are six of these ticket holders. The youngest one has been murdered. A guy came to his house and was like, hey, I got this letter. And showed the person the letter. And he got upset. And then he died. Right? That was that was Armstead. Yes. Okay. I should have paid more attention instead of picking noses with my mouse cursor. Were there any broken tables at the scene? Because if there were, we would probably just to. arrest Peter Dudley. <laughs> Very nice. And his Very nice. And his accomplice, Devon Dudley? Uh-huh. Okay. I'll read this newspaper. Save the table. Uh, oh, yeah. No, it's huh? it's totally like that Archer episode. I just looked up what a tontine is. And, yeah, like, that's the... Um, he, uh, his butler. I forget the name of the... Dennis. His butler on Archer. Woodhouse. Woodhouse. Oh. Yeah, Woodhouse is, like, one of the last remaining members of oh, a tontine. Oh, yeah! Yeah! that they made for some uh, like art or gold or something that they found in the war. I do remember that episode. This is a Simpsons episode too. Where uh, the grandfather I think it's... and one other person. Oh, yeah, yeah. With the painting. This is like right. a common trope. Yeah. A dangerous cat spa. A rather oh, large den of poisonous and uncommon snakes were found within a stone well outside of Whitehall. That's bad. Hmm, it's it, a new sh the snakes new had a shoe. Yes, they did. Who wants to enter a tontine with me? Uh, Jones, comma, ice cream says. Uh, I would like to amend that. Who wants to enter a tontine with me and then, like, maybe I'll concentrate in one spot that's not Just... super easy to escape from? <laughs> <laughs> Just a thought. Okay. Aw, oh, an anarchist. Uh huh. Fucking ancaps. Okay, it's been a long time since I played the original Sega CD version of this game. Uh-huh. What are we what are we 
and I, I know the basics. I'm looking for clues, man. I'm reading these newspapers. But like, com, uh, we don't know like what we're looking what? for, like at all. Yeah. I even. What was that? Oh no, mine was a joke. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that we should probably go look at the place with the miniature. Just come ice cream says anarchists did it. They followed the violated the NAP. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good job. Uh oh, a review of the new Panic at the Theater album. Yeah, yeah, Panic at the Theater is insufferable, that's what I was gonna say earlier. <laughs> I think they're just a rip off of the Fallout gents. Wow. <laughs> Not an apocalypse. Something. Something. <laughs> My alchemical tryst. Haven't you people <laughs> ever heard of closing a goddamn Nando's? <laughs> <laughs> Need to close this goddamn stream. Ah, <laughs> uh, New Scotland Yard. I don't know. It said to read the newspapers, and I'm reading them. Nothing in here seems useful. I mean, I guess we can come back and read those at any time. And maybe it'll become more useful once we have, like, context for what they'll be looking for? Maybe? Question mark? I hope. There's, like, too much stuff in the newspaper, and we don't know, like... We don't have anything. Yeah, that's... I mean, that's the problem with newspapers. There's just too much factual information in them. Where are those fucking listicles just at? Overwhelming. Let's go to the directory. <laughs> All right. Yeah, where's the... Top ten people that were probably the perpetuators of murder. We just talked to uh for that article. Holy what? shit. Oh, do you want to just go ask this dude about his dogs? That sounds fun. We can go pet the puppies. Uh what was what was this person's name? Joseph Whitfield? Wait, who is Whitfield? General Farmsworth Armstead, that's who. That was the guy who died. Stennett was his butler? We can talk to Stennett. I feel like we should go to his house, right? Like we should, the detective should yeah, go to the house? Yeah, for, sure, for sure. Yeah, we should check out the scene if we can. Okay. The air feels heavy. I found the general leaning over the display case. He had his saber in hand, the one that usually resides above the fireplace. I understand he was a collector of military figures. Yes, the display in the study shows the last great British charge that swept the French from Waterloo. Is there any significance to the fact that the figure of Napoleon is facing backward? Strange. Perhaps I really should really big hand. It straight. No, don't touch it. Not until the police have concluded their investigation. Well, yes, yes, of course. Of course. I also noticed the portrait over the display <laughs> case. Late Mrs. Armstead. Dre, do I detect a note of hostility? Oh man! You mean they didn't marry for love? Hardly. Lord Fitch, Mrs. Armstead's father, arranged the match. Her dowry was very generous. Lord Fitch would pay to any amount to ensure that he would not be left with a spinster daughter, especially such a nasty. If there was no love lost between them, why did he keep her portrait in his study? Actually, it was put up there to needle Mrs. Arnstead's brother, the present Lord Fitch. He never approved of the marriage. Even after her death, they were involved with mutual business affairs, they jointly owned stock or some such thing. Tell me, do you know what the General was doing at the time the intruder arrived? Yes, he was working on the new section of his book. The part that concerns the gem, the polar star, is very interesting, really. It traces the ownership of the gem to the brother of Napoleon, to the Russian Count Rostov. Unfortunately, the gem was stolen from the Count three years ago. As a matter of fact, the General just received a letter from a Pierre Montan, who said that he was willing to divulge the name of the present owner of the gem for the agreed upon fee. Do you know where Mr. Montan might be found? I believe he's staying at the Bridge House Hotel. Did the General have any encounters with anyone out of the ordinary in the past several days? Not really. An old friend of his has been in town, Jean-Paul Girard. 
Neither the general nor I have seen him in 40 years. In fact, they were going to meet this afternoon at the French embassy. Sure. I'm obviously curious about the general's last visitor. Could you describe him, please? He was an old man, a rather short fellow. He, he was bright. He came and carried a carpet bag. Did he get a British? No, no. He simply wanted to see the general, and he handed me a letter to take him to him. Yeah, that's obviously Freud. No, Freud killed him. Mm -hmm. Case closed. Other yellowed with age. Though I You're good at this. It was addressed in a graceful <laughs> hand to Captain Armstead, 12th Hussars, General's old regiment. When the general read it. He went very. I hate terrible. General Reddit. Mm hmm. He asked me to admit the general. Tell me, when you finally got into the room from the garden, were the study doors still locked? I noticed that there is an eight-foot fence surrounding the garden, and that the only way into the garden or out of it is through the kitchen door or the study. How terribly observant, Holmes. Uh, okay. Wow. All right. Jones come on, Ice Cream says, Fitch better have my money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I got them clue points! So there is there... There is not, like, a... Like in the board game version of this, there's like time goes forward and stuff. Is that not in this? I'm sure. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I have no idea. I feel like it should. Like I feel probably going to certain places will trigger things to change. Sure. Um, yeah. When when do we get the uh, the big guns? Internet technique says just tap through all this dialogue and get to the shooting. <laughs> uh, Chloe Firebird says it was Freud in the dining room with a wrench uh, and I will amend that to say the wrench represents a penis man this uh, this notebook doesn't help very much <laughs> also the dining room represents a penis <laughs> also Freud you know yeah what was Pierre Martin was that the the, the guy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who sent yep. the letter we should probably go talk to him or should we send the irregulars? M Matan wasn't the guy who sent the letter. Matan was uh, the guy who said, "Oh right, who I'm going to tell you yeah, where this he's... gem is if you give me give me some money." Wait, no, no, no. Matan is the old friend that's just randomly in town. No, no, that they Matan... haven't seen for forty years. No, Matan is is the guy who said he could tell him where the gem owner was for a certain amount of well, money. Okay, who was the old friend then? That's a good question. I forget. Is it in our clue notes? No, it's not. Our clue notes kind of suck. Did our quest log? <laughs> Just look on the map. <clears throat> Was it Robert Jurgens? Those are the most likely suspects. Oh, fuck. I need to get like an actual notebook and like write these things down. Maybe I'm thinking about popping open Notepad. Um, Do you? Th can I like re? Hold on. I wonder if it's in my Holmes files. Maybe we need to sit in our big thinking chair first. After I check the mail. Never Hang on. Me. I'm gonna. <clears throat> I'm gonna open up a Google Doc. And oh, nice. uh, and we can all write the notes. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. I'll I'll uh, put the people on the call as uh, you know people that can write, and then everyone. I'll actually put it in the chat too, so other people can watch. Ooh, ooh! Multimedia streams. This is so good. I'm gonna send the irregulars to go talk to Matin. As Holmes and Watson dick around, they go make poor people do their work. Do you want to read that to us, Jared? No, I don't. We got, we really fucked up, but we didn't get like a single. 
like British person on this call with us, huh? So let me, so let me go see what Mike's Where's, doing right now. Where's Mike? <laughs> so I don't know. What happens if we go? Watson's pretty pumped. Nobody was home, so let's go. Oh. I don't know what got into us. Alright. That wow. I don't know. Did it? Oh, so this... Oh, gosh. Oh, boy. Why are you going up so much? So, yeah, the Wait, higher, is this the, higher like... that number, the, the worse it is. Okay. Oh, is this like golf? Yeah, it's like golf with the murder. Should we restart? Oops. Murder golf. No? I feel Not like we, sh we, re we fucked up, though. We well, fucked up real bad. My immersion demands we keep going. Score score is just a number, Dre. Oh, we fucked up, though. You're only as shitty at this game as you feel. My immersion. I feel pretty shitty. <laughs> my immersion. Um, yeah, because I um, want to I wanna know uh, who... What? Sorry. No, it's cool. Uh, people on the call, can you give, like, put your... I, get, I thought I had everyone's Gmails. Oh, I got Dre's. Dre is the yeah. only person's Gmail I have. Oh, okay. Why don't I have that? I could have sworn. I have view only. It won't let me edit. Yeah, but I haven't done it yet. <clears throat> I'm going to request edit access. Oh, fuck. Alright, what do we do now? So... Where was Matan staying? He was staying at a hotel. We can maybe... Will they let us, like, poke around his shit? Well, that's where we went, and there was nobody there. Oh, we actually went to the hotel? I think so. <laughs> I think we need to start over. I think we're kind of fucked right now. Oh, no. I mean, really, all we'll do, like, the bulk of this time has been us watching things before starting this. Yeah. I just want to re-watch re that first cutscene and so we can actually take notes. Can we not, like... Sounds fair. Make sure there's not a way to just do that. Well. Um. I mean, I could try going to his house again. Um. What's in... What is search Holmes' files? Is that just looking up information on these people? Yeah, so when I click on it, I can search, and then that happens. I see. What was the person's name? Armstead, right? Mm-hmm. I found the general leaning over the display case. He had his saber in hand, the one that usually resides above the fireplace. I understand he was a collector of military figures. Yes, the display in the study shows the last great British charge that swept the French from Waterloo. Is there any significance to the fact that the figure of Napoleon is facing backward? Strange. Perhaps I should go and set it straight. No, no, no. Not until the police have concluded their investigation. Well, yes, yes, of course. I also noticed the portrait over the display case. The late Mrs. Armstead. Do I detect a note of hostility? I must admit we did not get on very well. But I might say that Mrs. Armstead did not get on very well with anyone, including the general. You mean they didn't marry for love? Hardly. Lord Fitch, Mrs. Armstead's father, arranged the match. The dowry was very generous. Lord Fitch paid any amount to ensure that he would not be left with a spinster daughter, especially such a nasty one. If there was no love lost, I remember this part to keep her portrait in his Earth. study. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was put up there to needle Mrs. Onstead's brother, the present Lord Fitch. He never approved of the marriage. Even after her death, they were involved with mutual business affairs. They jointly owned stock or some such thing. Tell me. Some such thing? Capitalism, I don't know. Yeah. Or yes, he was working on the new section of his book, the part that concerns the gem Polar Star. It was very interesting, really. Traces the ownership of the gem to the brother of Napoleon to the Russian Count Rostov. Unfortunately, the gem was stolen from the Count 
three years ago. As a matter of fact, the general just received a letter from a Pierre Martin who said that he was willing to divulge the name of the present owner of the gem for the agreed upon fee. Do you know where Mr. Martin might be found? I believe he's staying at the Bridge House Hotel. Did the general have any encounters with anyone out of the ordinary in the past several days? Not really. An old friend of his has been in town, Jean-Paul Gerard. Okay. The general nor I have seen him in 40 years. Ah, okay. That was the friend. Back, they were going to meet this afternoon at the French Embassy. I'm obviously curious about the general's last visitor. Could you describe him, please? He was an old man, a rather short fellow. He walked with a cane and carried a carpet bag. Did he give a name? No, no. He simply wanted to see the general, and he handed me a letter to take him to him. Did you read it? No. It was in an envelope. Rather yellow to the sheet. But I noticed he was dressed in a graceful hand to Captain Armstead, 12 Tazars. The general's old regiment. The general read Wow. It. He went very pale. And he asked me to admit the general. Tell me. When you finally got into the room from the garden, were the study doors still locked? Yes. I noticed that there is an eight-foot fence surrounding the garden, and that the only way into the garden or out of it is through the kitchen door or the study. How oh, terribly observant, Holmes. Right. So how much of this Word document is actually useful, and how much of it is just shit posts? Well... Little column A, little column B. Okay, so clue <laughs> number to not go up from that. That's good. So we can't just rewatch those scenes. That's Great. good to know. Um, what was the name of that hotel? J. It was like B something. I don't think it's Bridge here. Bridgestone. Yeah, it's not. It's not in here. Well, it's not under the, the list of banks. Oh, I guess I wouldn't. Is there a list of hotels under H? Bridge House Hotel. Ah. Let's send it on a regular. Ooh, okay. How in the world did you hear about it so soon, Mr. Holmes? Oh, God, love! Couldn't have happened more than 10 minutes ago. Body? What body? Well, the one that's upstairs in 203. Ah, oh, shit, son. Looking for Pierre Martin. That's the very fellow what was done in. Tell me, young man, do you know it transpired? Well, Mr. Matson checked into the hotel on the 8th. He was a French. The hotel on the 8th. I don't speak to him much. Who discovered the body? I don't speak to Frenchmen, you understand. Information still valuable. See me, well, Osborne, Norgate and Company publishers. Tell me, did you see anyone suspicious hanging about? Oh, I just realized my mic's been muted. Oh, buddy. Uh, Actually, now that I What's the name of the publishing company? There was a rather large man with a foreign accent. Oh. I think. He said that he wasn't sure about the address. Holy shit, look at that unibrow. He asked Mr. Matin, and I sent him straight up. Well, He's the killer, he did it. Well spoken, well mannered. I didn't think anything of it at the time. A few minutes later, he came down. His unibrow represents a penis. I saw him go out the front door and hail a cab. Was there anything amiss in the room? Cool. I'll say. An inkwell was toppled on its side. Left it off on the hobbit. Big blue spots and inky footprints right the way to the door. The manager will be in a fret when he sees it. Fortunately, there was no blood. Oh, well, thank God. That's really reassuring. Yes. Uh, so that the we'll, manager's we'll, going to be upset that there's footprints and not that a person was just fucking murdered. How in the world did you hear about it so soon, Mr. Rome? I mean, that happens. Like, you've got a big enough hotel. Yeah. Or the other. Information still valuable. See me, well, Osborne, Norgate and Company publisher. Tell me, did you see anyone suspicious hanging about? No. No, sir. Well, 
Actually, now that I think about it, there was a rather large man with a foreign accent. Russian, I think. He said that he wasn't sure That's about a really the flattering drawing. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice mole there. And I sent him straight Button. Up. Well, he was rather well all right, we got everything we need from this. <laughs> that was my favorite show on TJ Friday was Martin. <laughs> um, what was the name of that publishing house? Norgate and Company, Norbit and Company. Uh, Norgate, Norgate and Company. Yeah, Norbit and Company. Mm hmm. General Arms states the book. It's been Look at that fucking stash. Holy fuck. The, the mustache did it. Yes, On its own. Well, you know, yep. Many of the that mustache is clearly sentient. Like, it's already trying to smother that man. <laughs> <laughs> that revelation caused quite a sensation, and we were delighted. The more libel suits that were pressed against us, the more the book sold. I asked why the general chose to revise an already successful book. There was one piece of critical information missing from the first edition. It was the whereabouts of a fabulous diamond called the Polar Star. Is this guy a Monty Python character? Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so you can imagine his excitement when last March he received a letter from a Frenchman by the name of he's, Pierre. His accents Martin. got really extreme really fast. Yeah. <laughs> How many of these people talking do you... about crunchy frog pretty soon? <laughs> how how many of these people do you think are actually British, and how many are like whoever folks that are just doing really bad fake accents? That stash is British enough for literally every character in this game. Yeah. <laughs> As I understand, he was in town a day or so ago. He kind of looks like a baseball pitcher from the seventies, though. Unfortunately. I don't believe they had a chance to meet. Got him. Got him. Is there anything useful in that conversation? Not really. I don't really. think so. Just that he published the book without the gem and wanted to add the gem. And it annoyed people. Yeah. Um. Okay. What's now the name what? of What's the name of his friend? Let's Let's see if we can go talk to that person. John Paul Jarway. He's really gothic. Uh, I mean, I guess I don't know about all the other actors, but that guy was clearly Michael Palin, and his mustache was John Cleese, so, like, <laughs> that was at least uh, two British actors right there. Jean-Paul Gerard's not here. Not in our bum, list. Bum, bum. Dum, bum, bum. All right. Oh, boy. A large Russian man was seen fleeing the scene. Let's, let's see if there's anything about a Russian guy in the newspapers. Oh yeah, now we might have enough to like read through some of the newspapers. Also, this is two days after Matan checked in. I don't know if that's relevant. Matt Mitchell says the book left out the gem DLC, and yeah, I'm getting real sick of this bullshit. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, no, it was in there. You just had to pay to, like, unlock the little, like, strip of paper that you break to, you know. Shit's Never mind. <laughs> that joke, that was, that was a, a trademark, like, A to Q joke. That you can only get from Nick Scratch. <laughs> Yo, the fucking Lannisters did it. <laughs> they always pay their debts, right? Isn't that how it goes? Yeah, something like that. Which which means they always kill people. Oh. That explains it. Mm 
this is fucking <laughs> like Reddit misconnections going on in the London Times here. More is in the chat says that's why you wait for the Bodhi edition. <laughs> The Royal Russian Circus. Sounds way worse than the Royal Russian Rumble. Okay. This could be a thing. Igor Khrushchev. With the finest equestrian really entertainment scene in London. Daring trapeze artist Hercule Lamoche. An amazing Indian rubber man. Well, but it's Russian. That's the only reason I think it could be, like, maybe a thing. Or it's a red herring. I mean, I mean, Igor probably. Khrushchev, wait. It, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be either Igor Khrushchev or the man that they described was the the thing that they ride in the equestrian entertainment. Like he's the horse. <laughs> he's the horses. Oh, A scuffle boy. broke out last night at the lecture on women's rights and birth control. Yep. Mm -hmm. At the Russian Immigrant Social Club. Yep. Uh huh. We could also, there, I think we can go to the Russian Social Club. I think I saw that. If that's the place all the Russians hang out. I don't know if you want to send in a regular or go. Great. <laughs> Great. Perfect. Uh huh. Illuminating the illuminators. Um. I, I did that. Thank you. Thank you so much for that help. I'm right, glad so. Watson's in character. Yeah. What else, do, what else do we have here? I mean, I guess we could go talk to one of our regulars and be like, what's 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 the dealio? Um, which one do we want to talk to? Like, what are right. all their occupations? He's the foreign news editor of the London Times. Keen interest in crime news. Uh, a young barrister. So he's a lawyer. Um, Quentin Hogg is a crime reporter. Lestrade is Scotland Yard. So Mike in the chat says, I'll have you, Akatsuki, I swear on me mum. So that's good to know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think. Uh, miniature catfish in the chat says uh, wait I lost it now wait a fight about birth control I bet it was rubber man from the circus <laughs> <laughs> Nick whenever we try to have this fucking conversation you always bring up these bullshit rubber man arguments I'm sick of it <laughs> Look, it's the truth, okay? The rubber men are under... They live under the White House. Mm-hmm. And they control... They control the government by stretching their arms up through the vents and shuffling all the papers around so that the laws get passed the way they want them. Very indirect. Oh, but, Shoemaker uh, is the bloke to talk to. Always. All right. Let's go see Brad Shoemaker. <laughs> 